coming up on Hashtag That. Super Mario is back like you've never seen him before. Lil Nas X is back in his rightful place as the center of attention. And I'm back to prove that I know a singular thing about entertainment. All that and more from Hamden to Hollywood. We are your source for Quinnipiac's entertainment news. From Hamden to Hollywood, we are your source for entertainment news. Hey, Hashtag, it's Karina Kamey. And I'm Jacob Resnick. Welcome to this Q30 Department Director's Special Edition of Hashtag That. JoJo Siwa and Jenna Johnson are making history on Dancing with the Stars as the first ever same-sex dance partners to hit the stage. For their first performance last Monday night, the pair performed a quick step number to Are You Gonna Be My Girl and received the highest score of the night. Siwa wrote in, in a post following the episode, quote, making history and top score of the night was literally a dream come true for me. Chase every dream you have and believe in yourself, end quote. I can't wait to see what the rest of their season plays out. WandaVision star and Emmy nominee Katherine Hahn has lined up her next role as the late Joan Rivers in a new Showtime biopic entitled The Comeback Girl. Rivers broke barriers during her lifetime, paving the way for female comedians everywhere and becoming the first female late night television host. As if those shoes weren't big enough for Han to fill, she'll be executive producing the show as well. Broadway is back and so are the Tony Awards. The theater world gathered on Sunday for the first ceremony in two years and Moulin Rouge won big. The stage adaptation of the 2001 film of the same name picked up 10 awards, including Best Lead Actor, Best Choreography, and of course, Best Musical. And finally, live from New York, it's Kim Kardashian West. Saturday Night Live kicks off its 47th season this weekend, and the host list for the first four shows are star-studded. Owen Wilson will make his long-awaited hosting debut in the season premiere before Kim K takes the stage on October 9th. Rami Malek hosts on October 16th, and Ted Lasso himself, Jason Sudeikis, returns to Studio 8H on October 23rd. Jacob, when you think of Super Mario, what comes to mind? Uh, Goombas, uh, mm -hmm. mushrooms, and of course Princess Peach, but you know what I don't think of? What's that? Chris Pratt. Well, you better start. Chris Pratt is set to play Mario and an all-star cast for the upcoming Mario movie. Mike Hanley has the full scoop. Hey, Hashtag, it's Michael Hanley, bringing you some great updates from the world of Nintendo. Recently, we got a pretty cool update regarding the new Mario movie coming out. In the latest Nintendo Direct, Shigeru Miyamoto, the mind behind Mario, recently announced that there's going to be a fully animated Mario movie. Uh -huh. The movie will be released in theaters in holiday 2022. The release date for North America is on December 21st and will be announcing release dates for Japan, Europe and other regions at a later time. They also released the cast, which is um, raising some questions, to say the least. Um, for the most part, it's great. Starting off with the role of Peach being played by Anya Taylor-Joy. She was recently in The Queen's Gambit, really excited to see that in the animated world. Up next, role of Donkey Kong is being played by Seth Rogen, which I'm super excited about. He definitely brings the energy, and I really can't wait to see that from Illumination. It's gonna be awesome. Next, we have Jack Black playing Bowser, which is like the most perfect thing for this movie. He's probably gonna carry it like he does in every single film he's ever done, so I can only be excited for that. Next, we have Keegan Michael Key, who's playing the role of Toad. He can definitely bring the voice part for it. I'm really excited to see what he does with the character. Next, we have Luigi being played by Charlie Day, who is perfect for that role. He's been in a lot of stuff, like the Lego movies, so I'm really excited to see what he does with the character. But it's his brother where a lot of people show concern. Yeah, Mario's being played by Chris Pratt. How and why? And when are they gonna change it to Danny DeVito? Charles Martinet, who's been playing the role of Mario and Luigi for years, is only getting a small cameo in this animated movie, which is going to be the first real movie with Mario in a long time. This, I'm angry about this because I feel like it's the role he created and we're simply just mocking him with it with celebrity cameo. That's it for me, hashtag. Thank you very much. Back to you guys at the desk. That was awesome. Now, Karina, if you could be any character from Mario, who would it be? I always play as Daisy in Mario Kart and Mario Party, so I think I, I like have to pick her. Um, but what about you? I'm a big Donkey Kong guy, but let me tell you, dry bones, underrated. We're going to head to our first commercial break, but we'll be right back. Stick with us. 
What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. It's here, it's here! Wait, wait, wait! What? I can't drive. Why? Why? My... Oh. <laughs> We're back. Hey, Jacob, outwit or outplay? Yes. Well, that's the theme of the just premiered 41st season of Survivor. Manny and Audrey have the full review of the very first episode. Hey, Hashtag. This week, Audrey and I are here to discuss this past week's episode of Survivor. It's the season 41 premiere. Season 40 premiered February of 2020, so it's been a very long time since we have watched a new season of Survivor. And Manny and I are just going to give a little recap and some of our thoughts on the episode. As for my initial thoughts on the first episode, honestly, I was just overwhelmed. It's been so long since there was a new season, this being an all-new cast. I think it was just a lot to take in. The three tribes that we're looking at is the Yase tribe, the Ua tribe, and the Luvu tribe. In my opinion, I think that the Ua tribe, UA, I think I'm saying that right, is um, is the strongest right now. But they, they work together really well, and I am really looking forward to see what the future for that tribe holds. Out of the gate, I definitely think the Blue tribe, the Luvu tribe, is going to be the strongest. They have Danny and Deshaun, who are like two of the stronger men on the season. And Erica and Heather have both really also stood out to me a lot in the past episode as like very strong social players and strategic threats. So I think that overall, even though they have their little mistake in the beginning where they forgot to unclip their boat, like I think that they're gonna do really well. There have been so many changes to this game, some that we probably haven't even seen yet, but in the intro, Jeff was just talking about how this season it's going to be different. Over 10 days shorter. We used to be 39 days, now it's 26. The players have to fight for every single thing. They don't get rice, they don't get flint. Come season 41, they are making changes. I think that it is great that um, they're, they're still trying to keep the show alive, keep it new, keep it exciting. Another big thing that happened on this episode was Jeff getting rid of his iconic come on in guys line. He says it when the tribes go to challenges or come to tribal. I think that this is totally appropriate and it's time for change. I am in full support of Survivor and I think the way that they approach topics like this are handled really well. And Survivor has been pretty progressive and pretty um, intolerant of intolerance. Props to the contestants for speaking out and saying that they wanted a change on that phrase. Right now, um, Evie or Evie, is sticking out to me. Right now, I am really liking Evie. I think she's gonna be super, super social and super, super strategic. She is keeping on the down low that she is right now like studying for her PhD. This season is going to be so, so, so intense. I think that we're gonna see a lot of mental mishaps that's gonna then like domino effect alliances and relationships and we're gonna see more blind sides. We're gonna see more just lapses of judgment. Thank you so much for watching. I'm just so excited that the show is back and I'm so happy. It is the highlight of my Wednesday now. Hope we inspired you to watch some more Survivor or even start watching the show. Season 41 is a great place to jump in. Catch you later, hashtag. Really looking forward to the rest of the season. But Karina, which Q30 cabinet member do you think would take home a Hamden-themed Survivor crown? Ooh. See, that's a tough choice, but... Uh... I'm thinking our head engineer, AJ, he has a lot of like outside of the media suite skills that the rest of us just 
don't really have yeah. at all. Yeah, that's a good one. AJ might win Survivor, but the award for coolest cabinet member won't go to either one of us. She's actually live in studio with us now. Alyssa Murphy is here with this week's Trending Topics. Alyssa, take it away. You guys are too nice. <laughs> hey, hashtag, it is Alyssa. There is a lot happening in entertainment, so let's get right into it. Stranger Things has gotten even stranger. Netflix debuted a teaser trailer for season four of its original series, Stranger Things. The trailer left fans everywhere excited, yet spooked. This is the fourth teaser trailer that Netflix has released for the new season, and they've announced a non-specific release window for the year 2022. It's been over two years since the season three release, so fans are thrilled. To continue with Netflix news, a new trailer has dropped for season three of Netflix's original series, You. Production for the season began in November of 2020 and finished in April of 2021. After hearing these details, fans have been eager to learn more. Netflix announced a season three release date of October 15th and teased at some plot details. Fans are speculating about Goldberg's love interest in this new season and what may unfold. And finally, live music took over New York City this past weekend. The Global Citizen Festival made its in-person comeback with artists such as Billie Eilish, Coldplay, and New York's own Jenny from the Block, Jennifer Lopez. Between the musical acts and guest speakers, the show lasted nearly seven hours. Pop singer Lizzo said, quote, it's moments like this that give me hope for the future of our planet, end quote. Lovers of music and community could not have been more pleased with the festival. That is all I have tonight. Back to you guys at the desk. Uh, it sounds like Alyssa is giving you a run for your money as the king of Twitter. Uh, at Jacob underscore Resnick, 14.1K followers. Numbers don't lie. And speaking of kings of Twitter, Lil Nas X just dropped his debut album, Montero, and Emily McManaman has the full review. Let's check it out. Hey, Hashtag, I'm Emily McManaman. And I'm Julia Morelli, and this week we're here to break down one of the most anticipated albums of this year. Yep, last Friday, Lil Nas X dropped his debut album, Montero, and wow, did he not disappoint. Not only was the album a hit, but the promotional lead-up to it was a huge success. Yep, let's get started. Before the album's release, Lil Nas X organized many unique promotional tactics to advertise his upcoming music. Back in April, Nas released a line of sneakers relating to his controversial Montero Call Me By Your Name music video. Right, and after being sued by Nike for using their logo, he released the Industry Baby music video depicting a fake trial and a prison sentence to further promote his upcoming music. He also organized several fake maternity photo shoots to promote the birth of his first album. In terms of the actual music itself, Lil Nas X has created something that no other artist has ever done before. Yeah, I mean, he remained honest and real in his music, singing about his rough relationship with his parents, being bullied growing up as a gay teenager, and his pre-fame life. In his song, Sun Goes Down, Lil Nas X discusses running away from his life, having people talk bad about him, and being bullied for his skin color. Also in his song, Dead Right Now, he opens up about his difficult relationship with his addict mother and dealing with people trying to use him for his fame and money instead of wanting to be his actual friend. Nas has also collaborated with many other artists in this album, including Elton John, Megan Thee Stallion, Jack Harlow, Doja Cat, and Miley Cyrus. After listening to the album together, I definitely have my top three. What about you, Emily? Oh yeah, absolutely. My personal top three have to be Dead Right Now for Nas' display of vulnerability and honesty. Am I Dreaming has some of the best vocals on the album. It's extremely underrated, and Miley's voice blends great with Nas's. And Don't Want It is inspirational and got me excited about his success and all of his hard work. Those are such good choices. Um, mine would actually have to be Sun Goes Down, because he also shows vulnerability, like you said. Uh, dollar Sign Slime, because Megan's verse is one of the best on the album. And uh, Scoop, because of the rhythm in the song, and don't forget. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. If you haven't already, stream on Tarot and see whose top three you agree with more. Yep, thanks for watching. Call me what you want, call me when you need, just make sure it's on the other side of our next break.
When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. You gone with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure love. Will Tier left his movie corner this week to join us for the Hollywood News Update. Will, what's been going on? Hey everyone, I'm Willie Tier, and I'm here to give you this week's Hollywood News Update. Um, by the way, I do have a little bit of cold, so just might have a voice crack, but we'll, we'll keep going. First up, the Academy Awards just opened up their new museum fit with exhibits of some great people. You can lie in a patch of artificial grass and look up at the sky like a Studio Ghibli character in the Miyazaki exhibit, and you can go into the planetarium-like room to experience 2001 A Space Odyssey in Blade Runner. You can even partake in the Oscars experience, where you accept a golden statuette and they film your acceptance your very own acceptance speech. Luckily, they have plenty of movies that haven't been recognized for Oscars, too. They really did their best to put in important movies that were not correctly recognized at the time, like Citizen Kane and Do the Right Thing. Uh, what do you guys think about this new exhibit? Anything going? Well, Will, are you going to pay for our <laughs> flight tickets to get out there to uh, Los Angeles? But no, it does look really cool. It looks super cool. I looked through the entire website earlier, and it just looks like there's so much to do. And I think it has like six or more exhibits that all have like multiple aspects to them that you can walk through and go into and it seems really cool i just wish it wasn't in los angeles like all of the other <laughs> cool movie things yeah no i love interactive museums there was a uh, an snl pop-up museum mm -hmm. in, in chicago a couple years ago that i got to go to and you can kind of be on the set and, and see the costumes and all that kind of stuff so it seems like the uh, the oscars museum is kind of in that in that same vein so would uh, love to get the chance yeah if i ever get the chance to go to la i will be stopping by <laughs> like I, I was very upset that it was that far away but um, on a more serious note, the International Association of Theatrical Stage Employees are voting to strike for next week. The organization includes all the crew for film and television and are the reason that the magic happens. Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin post in t-shirts showing their support for strike action. The tweet shared by IATSE Local 600 said, quote, Icons forever and always, at Jane Fonda and at Lily Tomlin, stand alongside at IATSE in hashtag IASolidarity, hashtag I vote yes, um, end quote. And they're voting for higher pay and less hours with stars, directors, and cinematographers standing in solidarity. This will bring Hollywood and nationwide productions to a grinding halt. What do you guys think about the strike and the way this should be affecting the film industry right now? Well, as this is the industry that I think we're both looking to go into, and I know like most of the people in this room are looking to go into, um, it's, it's hard to see that it's even like a question of if you should have like a proper lunch break and proper working hours like those are things that we still just aren't doing for people i firmly believe in treating people like people <laughs> regardless of your career controversial i know yeah that. controversial opinion but um i just think it's i think it's sad that we still have to fight for these things but i'm glad that they're being taken seriously and hopefully this will make the changes that they're looking to find yeah listen in the age of social media and, and all this stuff we hear so much about uh the actors and and the big hollywood directors and uh, the people who get the most press. Um, There's so many people behind the scenes who work on these movies. Some of them, you know, don't have a direct, you know, impact on, on the, the physical film, but they're behind the scenes. They're working uh, just as hard as the actors themselves, if not harder. Um, and, you know, there are so many people uh, in this room, like you said, like working on cameras and, and on technical things. Uh, all these people deserve their credit and they deserve basic human decency and respect. Um, so 100% support uh, the cause. I know, and I agree with both of you guys. I mean, it's film, it's a collaborative project, and if not everyone collaborates and it gets representation, then there's no collaboration, there's no film in the first place. So I completely agree with both of you. And um, Dune, the new action fantasy film starring Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya, has grossed in over $75 million only overseas. Although the film has only been out in Europe for the past like two weeks, it is already breaking records and said to be the biggest movie of the year when it arrives in the United States. The film is set to hit the States on October 22nd, where it will be available in theaters and on HBO Max. I, for one, am extremely excited to watch this uh, sci-fi world come to life on screen. And what do you guys think about how much Buzz Dune is getting with only out being overseas right now? And are you guys planning to watch it when it comes available? Well, did, did you say Zendaya? I, I think he did. Z yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. That's the only part I heard. 100% watching this movie. <laughs> um, I'm not really into science fiction. I never, I never have been. <laughs> Um, but Zendaya's in it, and therefore I will watch it. I will watch anything that she's in. She's the only reason I watched you, 
like Euphoria, uh, that I watched Spider-Man for the first time before I was like into Marvel. It's just because I just love her. <laughs> and if she's in it, it'll be good. And Timothy Chalamet is in it. Like, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, 100%. And Will said it's coming to uh, HBO Max in addition to theaters. So sit on the couch, have the, the popcorn, and you can pause it whenever you need. Uh, yeah, seems like a great movie. Can't wait to check it out. Well, thank you so much for that Hollywood news update, Will. And I'm not going to lie, I'm a little nervous for our last segment. You're going to have to wait and find out what it is on the other side of this break. Meet the scan. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SaveByTheScan.org. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Welcome back. A uh, little foreshadow, foreshadow to our upcoming game. I'll give you a point now for our game later if you can tell me who Charlie D'Amelio is. It's that drink at Dunkin' Donuts, right? Close enough. <laughs> um, lucky for you, Mason and Nick are breaking down the D'Amelio's new reality TV show. Let's check it out. Hey, Hashtag, I'm Mason Glaude. I'm Nick. And today we're reviewing The D'Amelio Show on Hulu. The D'Amelio Show is about Connecticut's own uh, Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio with the parents. And just going through the lives of them. Uh, and that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. So before you watched the show, what did you think it was going to be like? And what did you know about them already? To be honest, I thought the show was going to be like kind of like a hammed up, keeping up with the Kardashians type thing. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be Kardashians 2.0. I was I was already thinking like, they can make 10 seasons of this, like following the girls, just like Kardashian drama. Growing up. And, and of course I like knew who they were, because they're so big on TikTok, but I didn't know that much about them. So after watching, what, what are your initial reactions? I'm not gonna say anything mean about any of them. Because they're they're very they're very nice people. Yes. Um, but God, are their lives not interesting? <laughs> no, I agree. It was way more like boring than I thought. Like nothing really happened in the show. Like, nothing no. really happened in the show. There was a three minute scene where Dixie was trying to find her can opener. <laughs> yeah, like it was very just watching them live their lives, which turns out not that exciting. Not at all. The show takes a more like mental health approach to it and um, shows how how difficult being a public figure is. At that young of an age. At that age. I think it was a little difficult to capture the true mental health parts of it because these girls are obviously struggling with what they're going through, but I don't think they wanted to expressly say what they were going through on TV in front of a bunch of people. The whole thing was just very sad. I was just sad watching it. I was like, I felt I felt bad for them, which I think was the point of the show. Well, let me let me ask you this: mm. Did the show change your perception of the girls? So it, I I I don't know if it changed it, more just like reinforced um, yeah. some things. I agree with that. Overall, I would say the show was just unproductive. There was one point that really bothered me. In the last episode, their dad, Mark, turns to the camera and says, Overall, I think everyone in my family is happier than they were two years ago. And from the last eight hours of that show, that is the most incorrect statement I could ever hear. The whole show was these girls being upset. I don't understand how they're happier than they were two years before. Would you recommend the D'Amelio show? If you are a die-hard fan, just them being there, you will enjoy it. That's it for us. I'm Mason. I'm Nick. And we'll see you next time. 
If you didn't already know, I run the entertainment department here at Q30, and Jacob runs the sports department. And we pretty much know nothing about each other's departments. So we're putting it to the test. We'll be taking turns asking each other questions, pop culture for Jacob, and sports for me, to see who really knows the least. Would you like to go first? Sure. All right, let's kick it off. I tried to keep this very, very general. I um, just to, uh, you know, give you, give you a shot here. Okay. Uh, so let's start it off. Uh, number one. The annual award presented to the best player in college football is called what? Mm, this does not bode well for me for the rest of this game. Um, it's like, it's gold. It's shaped like a football, is it not? It, it, is, a, it is a player carrying a football. That's not going to help you though. It doesn't help me, but I know what the award looks like. Okay. But I don't think I know the name of Close it. Close enough. Of course, it is the Heisman Trophy. Isn't, didn't somebody spike that at the ground then when they weren't supposed to? Maybe. Am I making that up? I, I don't know. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I have a first question for you, and you should know the answer because we talked about it, I think, not even a week ago. <laughs> um, name three of the original Dance Moms girls. Oh. We talked about this, I think, uh, four days ago. Okay. Uh, Kimberly? Kimberly? No. <laughs> okay. Keep going. Um, if you can get even one, I'll give you the oh point. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so full disclosure, when I was asked this question last week, uh, I said honey boo boo. I thought that was a great answer, uh, and I'm going to take that mentally as a point, but I think I'm going to have to uh, give up on the rest. All right, you had six shots to get yeah, it right. I'm not going to name all their names right now, but you <laughs> did have six shots. Okay. That's right. okay. Great. All right, here we go. Uh, in what sport is the word love used to represent a score in the game? Tennis. There we go. How about that? I got a point on the board. How about that? Yes. All right. All right. What former Nickelodeon star is also the longest running SNL live cast member? That would be Mr. Keenan Thompson. Yes. All right, we're one for one. We're Let's doing go. good. Love it. All right. What two sports are most known for having a recognition called the Triple Crown? Called the what? The Triple Crown. The Triple Crown. Um, should I just take a shot in the dark and why, be really embarrassed when I'm really wrong? Um, if, if you know me, one of them makes a lot of sense. Okay, so one of them is baseball. Sure. Okay, great. Um, with basketball uh no it is horse racing the triple crown the kentucky why derby, would i ever know the belmont that stakes, and the preakness is it's, it's, it's the, 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 the horse racing the kentucky derby preakness belmont all right go ahead all right who did forbes name the youngest self-made billionaire in 2019 the youngest self -made. and i'll give you a hint it was a big problem with calling this person self-made oh my goodness um so my mind went immediately to either Kim Kardashian or Kylie Jenner. Uh, I'm going to go Kylie Jenner. Yeah, Is that yeah. it? Did I get two? Yes. And you I got one? So I, let's go. All right. Awesome. That was fun. I'm a little upset. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> but that's okay. Before we head out for the night, though, it's time for a celeb celebration. Well, an ancient philosopher once said, real G's move in silence like lasagna. People say I'm borderline crazy, sort of, kind of. Woman of my dreams, I don't sleep, so I can't find her. Of course, that's the scripture of a Dwayne Michael Carter Jr., also known as Lil Wayne, who turns 39 today. From us to you, happy birthday, Wheezy. And if you were an emo kid in 2008, I just have to say, why'd you have to go and make things so complicated? We're wishing a huge happy 37th birthday to the queen who gave us skater boy, complicated, and girlfriend, the one and only Miss Avril Lavigne. And that is all we have time for tonight. Thank you for leaving the sports department for a <laughs> night to host with me. It was tons of fun, and now it's time to get you on Sports Boss. You know what? Deal. <laughs> Make sure you check us out at Q30 Entertain on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll see you next week, same time, same place.